So eight months ago, I decided to learn Unity. And after half a year of learning, I compiled a list of six of the most important things that I learned and struggled with. So first up, we're going to talk about mono behavior. I think it's something that's overlooked and very important. Because when you're using Unity, most of your scripts are going to inherit from mono behavior. So after doing research for this, I was looking at the documentation and I saw some really cool methods like on mouse drag, on mouse drag, enter, blah, 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 blah. I was like, damn, I could do some really cool things with this. When you are using mono behavior, I want you to know that every time you attach a script, it has to have a transform. And what a transform is, it's it's a point in space in your game. So it has an X, Y, Z, it has a rotation, and it has a scale. So every time you're using mono behavior, you will have this transform. And that's important, and we'll get to that later on. Just keep it in mind. Okay, so next up on the list is singleton. So singleton is not a unity specific concept. It's actually an object oriented concept. It's a design pattern. I really think that this really brought my programming to the next level because design patterns are very important. So design patterns, they're kind of like a recipe. And let's face it, when we program, most of the time we're not inventing new things. We're actually implementing some parts that have been implemented many times before. And what design patterns are is it's like a recipe where it gives you the best way to make that one part in your system. So for the singleton, it's the best way to create an object that should only have one single instance. Design patterns are so important that I actually purchased this book. And let me tell you, this is the best, one of the best, if not the best book on design patterns. So for example, in my game, I have a skill book and the skill book has many pages in it for each god. And the important thing about my skill book is it should, there should only be one skill book in the game. What happens if I accidentally created another skill book and I was updating one skill book and reading from the other skill book, it would be inaccurate. So for things that are very sensitive like that, that should really truly only have one instance, use the singleton design pattern and it can save you headaches. It also makes it very easy to access that instance. So a better solution is to make the class itself responsible for keeping track of its sole instance. The class can ensure that no other instance can be created by intercepting requests to create new objects. And it can provide a way to access the instance. This is the singleton pattern. Couldn't have said it better myself. Next up on the list, state machines. It saves a lot of headaches because sometimes the animation stuff in Unity can make you go kooky. <laughs> and one thing I want to want you to notice that when you're using state machines, we are no longer inheriting for mono behavior. So we um, don't have access to that update function because the state machine loop runs differently. It's based on the current animation state state. So there's actually five new methods you get when you inherit from state machine. And I'm just going to go over the first three because I haven't actually used the last two. But if you're just starting off, I don't think you would either. So we're going to talk it over for walking to running. So when our character is in a walking state and it enters into a running state, the first function on state enter is going to be called first and it's going to be called once. And then after that, while our character is in the running state, the whole duration, instead of the update function, there's going to be the on state update. So for that full duration, that on state update is going to keep being run. <laughs> and then once we exit the running state and go back to walking, on state exit is going to be called last and once. So we have like the sandwich, on state enter, on state update all throughout the duration, and then on state exit will be called last. And just through this simple thing, you can do, you can organize the logic to the animation states so easily. I was using code routines and making my life 
a complete mess, <laughs> but using animation states really helps you compartmentalize your logic and make it all easier. I had to use this when I started doing the Cyclops AI. You could see in my last two devlogs back, I talk about this and if you want to go in deeper, you can check that out. So next up on the list is not specific to Unity. It is a C-sharp concept. It is called Delicate. So, um, you know how in the top of your scripts you say all the variables you're going to use, like I'm going to use a public boolean and I'm going to use a private float and a private string. Well, a delegate is another data type, but it doesn't hold a boolean or a string or an integer, it holds a function. And just understanding that, take the time to let that seep in, helps you understand it. So when you declare this delegate, you need to say what arguments it's going to take. Maybe it takes two integers or two floats or maybe no arguments. Doesn't matter. And then the name that you use to create it becomes the function holder. So then after you have this function holder, you can give it a variable name and then make it equal to the function that it's going to hold. <laughs> and you can change this function throughout the lifetime. But just this concept is very important. I ha I was forced to learn delegates because in my code I ran into a brick wall where I really needed to separate some front end and back end and there was all chaos going on on the front end side. But once I separated and I had to pass this, a function between two scripts, boom, worked like a whistle if that's a pun. <laughs> So yeah, delegates are important because it goes into our next concept which uses delegates and that is event systems. So the event system was very scary to me because it had a bunch of things that I didn't understand including delegates. I actually, <laughs> I learned the, about the event system and I kind of didn't know what the delegate was doing. I was like, la da but I learned it actually before delegates, but I'm teaching it to you after because I'm nice. <laughs> So event systems allow you to compartmentalize your logic very nicely. And it's a very simple concept. What the event system does is you create an event. So it could be when the user presses the tab button, that could be an event. In my game, I have many events, but one is in our skill book, when a person gets to the next level, that's an event. So when you have an event, you have different subscribers attached to the event. So these are just people who are reacting to that event. And the event doesn't need to know who's subscribing to it. The subscribers don't change anything about that event. But the subscribers do specific tasks. So for, for instance, I have a UI bar that goes to the, it like goes, fills up. But when it goes to the next level, it like empties. I also have my character performing an animation because I went to the next level. You can have like confetti falling from the sky. So these, I just named three things that subscribers could do. And as you can see, it could really separate the front end from the back end, which is very important when you're making a giant game. So last on the list, scriptable objects. So when you use a scriptable object, you can see it actually looks pretty different. We're not, no longer inheriting from model behavior and we have something strange on the top too. So one important thing to know about scriptable objects is they lie in different parts of the game. So do you remember when I told you that in model behavior, when we use it, it's a point in space in our game? Well, scriptable objects are different you, because you can't attach them to game objects. When you create new instances of a scriptable object, it's not creating this whole transform with XYZ, rotation, scale. No, it's not creating anything new. It's just referencing that project asset file. And that's very important because let's say we have an item system and we need 20 apples. If I was using like a script with mono behavior, then every Apple is going to have a point in space and it's going to have a transform and it's going to take up all that space when we don't need it. Instead, we can just reference like the values in a file like an apple has this color, this price, this weight, and we are not creating anything new. It's very efficient. 
So in my game, I'm using scriptable objects for each page in the skill book. And you have to put the different data types that each page should could contain. And there's um, some other things with data containers that I haven't dove into, but these are the basics of scriptable objects. So um, if you're just starting off with Unity, I think it's good to know that these concepts exist. You don't have to master them. I haven't mastered them for sure. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. <laughs>